Holy City Center Radio, it is episode 197, and I am your host, Christian Sanger. Today is Friday, December 1st, 2023. Hello, hello, hello. Happy to be back with you after the extended break for the holiday. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving, whatever you were doing. I hope it was a fantastic uh, day or several days for those who had work off, maybe visiting family. Uh, But, uh, you know, just when you think it's time to slow down, (laughs) it is December 1st, which means we are just 24 days away from the next major holiday. Uh, I'm sure some of you are feeling the crunch with making plans or buying presents and all that, but I hope it's not too stressful. Uh, I had a great Thanksgiving, uh, as you all remember from the last episode. I was back in Connecticut to see my parents as well as my brother, my sister-in-law, and their two kids, my niece and nephew. Uh, I had a, a great time. We didn't do anything, you know, super, you know, big or headline grabbing as it were, but uh, just spent a lot of time with each other. Uh, Thanksgiving meal was amazing as always. And uh, it was just really great to be home and, and be with the, my family. I hadn't, I've, I've seen them, you know, uh, they've come down, we've done some things, uh, but that was back in the summer. So it'd been a few months since I'd seen everybody in person and I hadn't been to Connecticut in almost a year, I think. Uh, you know, I went for the holidays last year. And so, yeah, it was, it was a nice visit. Um, we, you know, just did some little things like went to my nephew's soccer game, they had an indoor soccer game. Uh, so that was fun being able to see him play. And, um, my brother is an assistant coach on a high school football team. So we went to uh, the Thanksgiving rivalry game, um, in a, truly traitorous move my brother uh is uh, like i said an assistant coach on a high school team with uh i I believe his best friend from high school as well as some other folks uh that we have known through the years but they are all on the high school football staff for the high school that's like next to my hometown so they're not coaching my hometown team but their rival is our hometown team so it's just you know it's, it's great i'm always cheering for them to do well of course and and even though my allegiances of course lie with my high school um as my brothers and his friends should <laughs> and of course you know, I'm happy for them. Uh, the rival team, my brother's, uh, you know, team now, uh, they did win. Um, so good for them on that rivalry Thanksgiving Eve game. Um, and they're in the playoffs now and, uh, they actually won their first game. So really exciting for them. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm just teasing as much as I would love for them to be coaching my hometown team instead of the uh, next door neighbors. Uh, they've done an amazing job with that program and, uh, really, really proud of my brother and, and his friend who, um, you know, uh, put a lot of time and effort into coaching this team and, and making these kids better. And, uh, it's, it's fun to, to see how successful they've been outside of that. Just, uh, you know, we went out to dinner once me, my mom, my dad, and the kiddos, uh, when my brother and sister-in-law were doing a friend's giving. So that was nice to, to spend time with them. I mean, the kids are just that perfect age right now. One's 11 and one is nine. You know, they've got their own personalities, uh, they've got their, you know, their favorites, their things they like to do, their little jokes. And, uh, you know, it's just these last few years and, and, and still are just so fun with them. Um, you know, still a few years away from the teenage years where they're, they're probably not going to want to hang out with family anymore. Uh, you know, so it's nice to just have them, you know, they don't have a car. They can't go jet off with their friends or anything crazy like that yet. So, uh, you know, they like spending time with their family. And, and so that's special. It's always great to see them and obviously always great to see my family as well. So really happy um, with the trip. It was great. And, uh, you know, obviously happy to be back here in Charleston and, and getting back into the groove of work and all that, but certainly miss them. But the good news is I, I'm going back for Christmas, so I'll be able to see them again real soon. Uh, the weather was pretty chilly up there. I was not a fan, to say the least. Uh, and I, I'm sure it's going to be just as cold, if not worse, come Christmas time when I'm visiting. But I'm holding out for some unseasonably warm weather when I go up there this time. Uh, but we'll see. So a few weeks, I will be here in Charleston before jetting off again. Uh, so everything should be back to normal as far as the podcast and everything. And I'll keep you updated on the, you know the holidays, what the schedule will be like, uh, to the best of my knowledge with traveling and everything. But 
We're back on the normal schedule. Should be hearing from me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday leading up to the holiday. Uh, But as always, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss anything. Uh, Without any further delay, it is time to get into the news. Former attorney and convicted killer Alex Murdoch was officially sentenced to 27 years in prison during a hearing that was held this past Tuesday morning. You may remember that Murdoch decided uh, and and ended up pleading guilty to 22 counts, including money laundering, breach, breach of trust and financial fraud as part of a plea agreement reached by his defense attorneys and state prosecutors last week. Uh, We touched on that. You know, he was taking responsibility for those financial crimes. Some thought maybe this was, you know, a strategy to be like, see, I have no problem saying when I committed a crime and taking responsibility for it. And since I'm fighting the uh, murder charge, I I clearly didn't do that. So we'll see how that works in the long term for him, especially since he's already been convicted on the murder charges. Uh, But in any event, adding to his current jail sentence, um, that he's having for that. We now have the 27 years for these financial crimes. Murdoch said uh, to the judge at that earlier hearing this month that quote, I agree that I wrongly took all of that money, your honor and did all of those crimes End quote. So didn't even fight it was forthcoming, you know, to his minimal credit in the situation and, and saying that, yeah, I did these and I deserve to be punished for it. Now that was when he was putting in the plea agreement, But on Tuesday, it was officially accepted by the judge, um, so that 27-year sentence is in effect. He will be required to serve at least 85% of that sentence, which equates to 22 and a half years. Now, of course, he's already in jail for life um, for the murder charges. If somehow that is overturned with, you know, we've talked about it before, they're, they're trying to, you know, get a new trial and all that, these financial crimes would still be in effect. So he will be in jail if somehow the unthinkable happens with the the murder charges, uh, as far as these crimes are concerned, he'll be in jail for at least 22 and a half years. Now, Tuesday's hearing was also uh, the first time that some of Murdoch's 18 victims, the financial victims, had the opportunity to speak directly to him. You can see some of the clips online if you so choose. Obviously, it got emotional at, at times for people. There was money that they were banking on and, and deserved, um, you know, from court cases, you know, people who had been injured and got a settlement. Of course, you all know the Satterfield family, the former housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield died on the Murdoch's property from a fall. Um, and that money that was supposed to go to her family was stolen. So there were certainly some emotional moments from these family members who were able to speak directly to Murdoch. Some were understandably upset and had some choice words for him. Others Still had some, you know, choice words to say to him, of course. But uh, one of Gloria Satterfield's children even said that he forgave Murdoch for the crimes. Um, although, you know, he still mentioned he didn't really know what else to say, and it, it just hurts. So, uh, if you want to look up the, that uh, those clips, you certainly can. Uh, but the the headline here is that no matter what happens with those murder charges. Alec Murdoch is in jail for 22 and a half years at a minimum for the financial crimes. After years of delays, construction, and some other changes, the Charleston 9 Memorial along Savannah Highway is almost complete with new updates. Now, this is not to be confused with any Emanuel uh, 9 memorials. The Charleston 9 are the firefighters who died on June 18th, 2007. Uh, They were killed while fighting a fire at the former Sofa Superstore at that address in West Ashley. At the time, it was the highest firefighter fatality in the U.S. since the September 11th attacks in 2001. Charleston city officials uh, were confident previously that the memorial would have been completed before the 16th anniversary of the fire, which is this past June 18th. But they had some permitting problems and weather conditions that caused the completion to be delayed. So the good news is, after all these delays and things, it should be done uh, relatively soon. And you can get some more details as as far as what exactly the memorial will have in the show notes. There is already, obviously, some markers and things there, but this will be an official memorial that they've been working on for for quite some time. And again, uh, not to be confused with the Emanuel 9 memorials and uh, that are being planned, uh, which are also still in the works. And lastly, you know, I did mention in the last podcast that we should all give uh, Mayor-elect William Cogswell a chance 
and support him because if he succeeds, that means Charleston succeeds and that's a good thing for everybody. And I mentioned that I thought both sides of the aisle were going to realize that, you know, if they were doom and gloom, Oh no, we were, we elected this, you know, a uh, far right Republican. He's going to destroy everything. I felt like that was a little bit too extreme. And the people who thought he's going to swoop in and implement some MAGA agenda and fight all these culture wars were going to be disappointed because I, I don't really think he necessarily buys into all that. That was my feeling based on meeting him, seeing uh, the in reading recaps of you know, different mayoral forums and interviews and stuff. He's certainly a Republican, which I know is a deal breaker to some people, just period. <laughs> you know, that, that's just the way it is with partisan politics. Uh, but I, I, I truly believe that he was more uh, moderate than some uh, thought. And uh, it, it, who knows? We'll see what happens. But this week, he made an endorsement in the Republican presidential primary that I think shows he's more moderate and more of that like kind of old school Republican party, you know, pre 2016 Republican party, as far as his values and beliefs. So uh, the mayor elect was on Fox news this past Tuesday. And uh, he was asked, you know, all sorts of questions, of course, about his campaign, his election victory and so on. Uh, But when he was asked who he would endorse in the GOP presidential primary, his answer was former South Carolina governor, Nikki Haley. Cogswell said, quote, I've got to go with her. She's been an incredible governor. And quote, he went on to say she, he thought she would be uh, she's, you know, would be good as far as get, getting to good solutions. Uh, she's pragmatic and, and things like that. So for those who are worried about a MAGA agenda and this extremist, well, he, he, he had a chance right there to say he's endorsing President Donald Trump and he chose not to. Uh, previously, after the January 6th, Uh, insurrection, riots at the Capitol, whatever you prefer to call it. Uh, He came out and, you know, basically denounced Trump and and said he was, you know, disappointed and, and, and thought he was in the wrong on that day. So he had shown that he's not on board with some of the worst things that have happened. And his endorsement of Nikki Haley, I think shows that he's not as far right as some worried that he is. Um, he is more moderate, which Nikki Haley is more moderate in comparison to the Trumps and DeSantis's of the world. Now, again, that is not to say that there aren't things to, uh, there aren't uh, things in Haley's past that people could find problems with or policies that you don't agree with. And I, I know that some quote unquote moderate policies seem extreme to someone on the other side sometimes, but don't get so I get that I know where everyone's coming from with all that uh but I, I think it's safe to say there is a difference uh between a Donald Trump and a Nikki Haley and, and with Cogswell saying he's endorsing her I think it shows that he is more center than some believed and and that's a good sign you know as much as we rail um and on this podcast, I know a lot of times I, I, I rail against the far right, especially. And sometimes it probably seems like I'm railing against just any Republican or any conservative. But true, truly, there are good politicians uh, in every party, not just Democrat, Republican, but also independents and any other party that's out there, whether it's the Green Party, what have you. Yes, the, that doesn't mean that I agree with uh, you know every single issue that these quote unquote good politicians um you know, champion, but, uh, you can sometimes at least understand part of their thought process or why they believe what they believe. Um, you know, even if in the end you, you decide to disagree, you can still respect someone. And and there are people, um, on the Republican party, they certainly respect, even if I disagree with them. So I, 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 you know, I still, like I said, I, there are some things with Nikki Haley that make her a no-go for me as far as uh, electing her. Um, but it was nice to see that our, our mayor, when he had a chance to endorse someone in that party, shied away from Donald Trump, the MAGA movement, the, the extremist side of things as far as that's concerned. So just putting that out there again doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things as far as what he'll be like as a mayor. But I think this kind of signals what I was talking about in that last podcast, which is I don't think 
the people who thought he was going to be this crazy extremist, I don't think they're accurate. And the people that thought he was going to come in and be this super MAGA pushing all this like culture war stuff, uh, it's just not going to happen. Um, so I think it's a good sign. But of course, we'll see what happens uh, as we move forward. Uh, he officially takes office in January. So that'll do it for this edition of Holy City Center Radio. Not a ton going on as far as big news stories this week. I, I feel like, you know, with the holidays and stuff, there was a lot of, um, you know, holiday related stories, but not necessarily something that needed to be talked about here on the podcast. I feel like I've seen a lot of stories, unfortunately, about car accidents in the area, um, about missing people um, everywhere from teenagers to adults. Thankfully, a lot of them have been located. But I feel like that's what my feed has been with local news for whatever reason over the last you know week plus. And not a lot of big, big stories. You know, part of that, again, is the holiday and what have you. So uh, that's why some of this stuff I talked about um, happened earlier this week. You know, with my traveling and, and getting back to work and things, I wasn't able um, to get a podcast done until now. Uh, so thankfully, you know, I didn't have a backup of these huge stories. But uh, hopefully you learned something um, from these and, you know, we'll have some more bigger topics to talk about um, as we go through the month. But again, I, I expect as we get close to the Christmas um, holiday that it's going to kind of slow down a little bit. I think the only major update from my last podcast was that national story involving Buffalo, uh, the Buffalo area, I'm sorry, up by Niagara Falls. Uh, thankfully, that turned out to not be a terrorist related attack. Uh, still a lot of questions about what exactly happened, but it seems like it was a tragic accident. Uh, so if for some reason you missed that story, I did talk about that on the last podcast, and, and that is the the most recent update. Uh, just a really bizarre uh, story um, just before Thanksgiving. But other than that, seems like it's been fairly quiet. And you know what? Sometimes that's okay. <laughs> So uh, with that, I will leave you until Monday's episode. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Be sure to go to holycitycenter.com to check out the new website as well as see what events are going on in town. If you want to uh, help out the podcast and the website, there's several ways you can do it. Many of them are free. Some of those free ways include subscribing to the podcast, rating it, reviewing it. Um, all those things just take a few moments of your time uh, and help get the podcast out there to more people. You can take that extra step if you want to by going to patreon.com slash Holy City Center, uh, where you can sign up for one of those support tiers. I want to thank Lindsay Marie Collins with LMC Sound System for producing this and every episode of Holy City Center Radio, as well as musician Tyler Boone, whose music you hear in each and every show. And of course, I can't say it enough. Thank you to all of you for listening. I greatly appreciate it. Can't wait to talk to you on Monday. Get back in the swing of things here with the podcast. But until then, have a great weekend. And of course, good night. Good luck. <laughs>